8.15 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time 8.15 8.11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time 8.11 Nick Clegg joins Facebook as head of global affairs Nick Clegg, the former Lib Dem deputy prime minister, is joining Facebook as its head of global affairs and communications, the Financial Times reports, paywall. It says Clegg agreed to take on the job after months of wooing by Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook's chief executive, who told Mr. Clegg he would have a leading role in shaping the company's strategy. Clegg, who lost his seat at the 2017 general election, is going to relocate it with his family to Silicon Valley in California, the FT says. One of the surprising aspects of this story is that this is the sort of job that you might have expected to go to one of Clegg's former special advisors. By coincidence, Jack Blanchard in his London Playbook briefing has a good list of former Whitehall advisors who have gone on to work for tech companies. There are 15 names on his list. Nick Clegg at the Pink News Awards this week. Photograph, Oliver Dixon, Rex, Shuttershock 7.26 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time 7.26 Sadiq Khan urges Londoners to join People's Vote March updated at 7.27 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time 6.58 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time 6.58 6.50 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time 6.50 Peter Walker Theresa May is to host a vast conference call with business leaders about Brexit and the Brussels Summit, Number 10 has said, speaking to 120 chief executives and chair people on Friday. Friday afternoon. The call, which is due to last up to an hour, is to update business on the Brexit negotiations and the European Council discussions, May's spokeswoman said. Companies involved include Tesco, RBS and Diageo, as well business groups like the CBI. May has faced significant pressure from the business world about the continued uncertainty of the Brexit outcome, and this is the first time she will have personally taken part in this post-summit conference call, which is usually led by officials. She'll be talking to them about the discussions this week at Council, and taking questions from them, the spokeswoman said. She was keen to talk to them after an important week. She will host the call from her constituency. We are promised more details after it is over. May is still for now in Brussels for the post-summit Asia-Europe meeting ASEM, conference, where she is meeting the South Korean president, Moon Jae-in, and the Chinese premier, Lee Kejang, among others. China's Prime Minister Lee Kejang poses with Theresa May at the Asia-Europe summit in Brussels today. Photograph PIROS CHKA Vanda WOUW Pool EPA 617 AM Eastern Daylight Saving Time 617 556 AM Eastern Daylight Saving Time 556 Barnier says he cannot predict what will happen in Brexit talks because UK politics so complex updated at 712 AM Eastern Daylight Saving Time 530 AM Eastern Daylight Saving Time 530 Theresa May at the Asia Europe meeting in Brussels today alongside Thailand's Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha right photo Olivier Hoslet, EPA 5.28 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, 5.28 Hunt says there will be consequences if it's proved Saudi Arabia murdered Khashoggi, but response will be considered 4.55 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, 4.55 Hunt rejects claims May has capitulated to EU demands 4.20 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, 4.20 Tory Brexiters would vote down extra payments to EU for longer transition, says Rees Mogg. Theresa May is still in Brussels today, where an Asia-Europe meeting, ASE Summit is being held, but the main Brexit discussions of the week are over and she will return to London to find a party not exactly reassured by her stance. I can't be 100% sure, but I suspect she may be the first Prime Minister in history to have one of her backbenchers given on the record interview describing the government as a shit show and saying that, if he wasn't an MP, he would not even vote for it. The main development at yesterday's summit was May's admission that she was open to the idea of extending the Brexit transition by a year. The reaction from her party was so hostile that, by the end of the day, she was distancing herself from the idea, but that has not stopped the Tory Brexiter Jacob Rees-Mogg this morning doing his best to bury it for good. Rees-Mogg is chair of the European Research Group, the highly organized caucus of around 50 or so Tories pushing for a harder Brexit. If the ERG were a separate party, Rees-Mogg would get two questions every.
week at PMQs, instead of the SNP's Ian Blackford, and in an interview on the Today program he said the ERG would block any legislation agreeing extra payments to the EU for a longer transition. He told the program, if the government is saying to us we will pay £39 billion plus, for the extension, £15 billion or £16 billion more per annum, and we don't have anything in return other than a waffly political declaration, I think that will be very hard to get through the House of Commons. I think it will be very hard for anyone to justify to their constituents. Other people have said that extending the transition for a year would cost the UK £10 billion in extra payments to the EU, but Rees Mogg is quoting a higher figure on the basis the UK would no longer qualify for its rebate. There has been speculation that the ERG might introduce an amendment to the finance bill to this effect. But Rees Mogg said it was more like that they would target the EU withdrawal agreement bill, the one due to be introduced early next year legislating to implement the withdrawal agreement. He said, in terms of what may happen legislatively, I think the implementation bill will probably be more important because that will set out the legal basis for making any payments to the EU and it will be possible to look to amend that. Amending finance bills is much harder than it sometimes sounds. So I think the withdrawal bill implementation will be the key legislative point. The ERG on their own cannot win votes in the Commons. But, if they side with the opposition, they can defeat the government. So, if May did want to legislate for a longer transition, period, with extra money going to the EU as a result, she would only get that through the Commons with the support of Labour. There will be more Brexit summit fallout today, but there's not much on the agenda formally. As usual, I will also be covering breaking political news as it happens, as well as bringing you the best reaction, comment and analysis from the web. I plan to post a summary when I wrap up, at some point in the early afternoon. Here is the Politico Europe roundup of this morning's political news. And here is the Politic Show list of today's top 10 must-reads. If you want to follow me or contact me on Twitter, I'm on at Andrew Sparrow. I try to monitor the comments BTL but normally I find it impossible to read them all. If you have a direct question, do include Andrew in it somewhere and I'm more likely to find it. I do try to answer direct questions, although sometimes I miss them or don't have time. If you want to attract my attention quickly, it is probably better to use Twitter. Updated at 4.55 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time.